Welcome, boys and girls. My name is Cherry Steinwinder, but many children call me the Bread Lady. On behalf of the Center for the Healing of Racism, I am happy to be with you today. One of the things that I often ask children is, if you live in Houston, Texas, as I do, raise your hands. So, Houston, Texas is our home. But then when you think about little children all over the world, we all live on the planet Earth. Earth is our home. And what is very interesting is that all children globally eat bread. And this bread can look different from culture to culture and country to country. And so today, Mrs. Cherry is inviting you to see breads that children eat globally. But first of all, you have to say the magic words if you want me to open the bread basket. And the magic words, open the bread basket, please. So can you do that for me? Open the bread basket, please. And so you've asked, and so now, Mrs. Cherry will open the bread basket. As I said, children eat bread globally. And bread could be very big, like Barbarie from the Middle East. Boy, this is really a big bread. I wonder if I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with this bread, if I can eat the entire bread. The next bread is injera. Can you say injera, boys and girls? Injera, people and children in Ethiopia and Eritrea eat injera. And it is a very different texture than any bread that I've ever tasted. In fact, to me, it sort of looked like a wet sponge. And so the way that injara is eaten, you take the injara, you put it on a plate, and you put your vegetables, your meat, your sauces, your carbohydrates on top of the injara. And it's eaten with hands. So it's eaten with your hands. So boys and girls, it's not just what is eaten, but for many boys and girls, the way that it is eaten. This is a very sticky bun, and it is made from rice flour. And in fact, not all bread is made by wheat. The injara was made with telf flour. And now, this sticky bun that a lot of people in China eat is made with white rice flour. And so, this one is just a sticky bun from China. Isn't this cute? I often look at this bread and the little bitty white dots on it remind me of little children that have freckles. Anyone in your classroom have freckles? Just raise your hands. Well, this bread is not only brown on the outside, it is also brown on the inside. And this is a pumpernickel bread, just a pumpernickel bun. Many breads, boys and girls, have very long stories and long histories. For example, matzah. Matzah is a bread, even though it's hard, it is called the unleavened bread. And Jewish people all over the world eat matzah during the time of Passover. And it is a bread that reminds Jewish people of how they had to run away from their home. 
They had to escape from being persecuted as well as being killed. And so they did not have the time to wait for the matzah to be big and fluffy like the challah bread. See, the challah bread is big and fluffy because it has an ingredient in it that makes it rise to get big and fluffy. They were running for their lives. So since they did not have the time to put the yeast or the baking powder into the dough to make it big and fluffy, this is what we get, a very hard cracker bread. But what is very interesting about this one, boys and girls, it reminds me of a time that other people in the world had to escape and leave their homes in flee of their own safety. And so it reminds me also of a place not too far from our home, Houston, Texas, called New Orleans. And when the big hurricane happened and children had to leave their home in New Orleans and to flee and many of them came to our home, Houston, Texas. So it is very important for us to remember that sometimes life can be very difficult, but we can always find a way to survive. Just as using and making matzah without putting the yeast in it to make it rise big. But I'm gonna hold on to this one as I look at another bread that boys and girls from the Jewish culture eat all the time. And this bread is called challah. Boys and girls, can you say challah? Challah. And this bread always remind me about sharing. That when we have plenty of food, when we have enough, that we should be able to share with other boys and girls. You see, long time ago, when the mothers and the fathers would bake challah, they would always take a piece of the challah, the dough that is, and give to the holy person. And the holy person was called a rabbi. And the rabbi was the keeper of the word of God. And the people did not want the rabbi to starve to death. So every family that made challah would give a piece of the dough to the rabbi. And I think that's a very beautiful story about sharing. And in fact, right now in our world, many children are going to bed hungry every night. And to be hungry not only hurts the stomach, to be hungry also hurts the mind. Little children sitting in classrooms that's hungry, it's very difficult for them to be able to study, to read, and to memorize. And so I want you to remember challah as a bread that teaches us about giving. As I said, boys and girls, breads can be little and breads can be big. And bread can be soft and breads can be hard. And this is just a French breadstick. Kind of long, but not as big as the barberie. And this is something that many of us, you know, are accustomed to eating, French bread. The next bread is from Germany. And in fact, I have two breads from Germany. And this bread is called a Kaiser roll. Can you say Kaiser roll, boys and girls? And oftentimes, I will say, the word Kaiser, when you translate it from German to English, it means king. So sometimes I will tell boys and girls, that king must have been really full of himself, that he needed to have a bread named after him, the Kaiser. Roll. This is another bread from Germany, and it is called just a German black bread. 
and it is made from pumpernickel. And so, the German black bread, so there are many other breads that children eat in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. My husband is Austrian, and my husband grew up eating Kaiser rolls and black German bread. Boys and girls, one of the interesting things about the United States now is that many children from Latin countries live in Houston, Texas, as well as all over the world, and especially all over the United States. And so this bread, when I was in Mexico, every meal they served bolillo. Can you say bolillo, boys and girls? So this bread is one that I had for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, bolillo. Wow, just look at this bread. Two different colors. If you notice, the bread is white and brown, all at the same time. And I always love bringing and showing this bread to all boys and girls, because many children in the world have parents that may have skin color that's the whiter part, and one of their parents may have skin color of the brown part. And these two people, a mommy and a daddy, fell in love and made one beautiful human being that looked like you. And so this is just a marble bread, but it is made from pumpernickel as well as wheat rye. Oh, this one. Boys and girls, this is a very dark, heavy bread. And this bread is from Russia. And so boys and girls eat a very heavy, dark rye bread. And it is very traditional for people to enter other people's homes as a guest and be able to have tea as well as bread, which is a very important custom in Russia. So this is just a Russian rye bread, but it's very heavy. Boys and girls, before I show you and introduce you to another bread, I would love very much for you to repeat after me. And what I want you to say is, little boys and girls come in different colors, different sizes, and different shapes. But we all belong to the same human family, and we are all good, and we are all beautiful. Oh, thanks so much for repeating that. But I want you to repeat something else. I want you to say that bread come in different colors, different sizes, different shapes, but it's all bread and it's all good. Thank you so much for doing that for me, boys and girls. And I will ask you to do it again, because this is the importance of the lesson, to be able to know that we may look totally different in colors, size, and shapes, but we all belong to the same human family. Ah, but look at this bread. Look at the shape of this bread. And this bread is called zitar. And this bread is from Iraq. And when I show this bread to boys and girls, the shape is very odd, very different. But at the same time, it reminds me of how many boys and girls in Iraq is going to bed hungry every night. And to be able to just have this one piece of bread that I'm using for show and tell they would give anything to have this one piece of bread. And again, this bread is called zitar. 
This is a bread that I have never seen before. When I was shopping at the Chinese market yesterday, I happened to notice this bread, and I think this bread was fried. And however, since I've never seen it before, I have no idea what the name is. The only thing that I can say to you boys and girls is that this bread came from the Chinese market. And I, you see, you could kind of split it apart. So the bread that was purchased at the Chinese market, different size, different shape. And for the boys and girls from India, from Pakistan, that's very familiar with naan. And naan, many people will call it tandoori naan. And this bread is made in a type of oven that's totally different from the ovens that's in our kitchens that our moms and our dads bake in. A tandoori oven is a big stone, and the people will get that stone very, very, very hot. And it sort of looked like a little cave. And once the stones is very, very, very hot, they take the raw dough and they slap it on the side of this hot stone oven. And this is how they bake the naan. So all the way from India and Pakistan, naan. And boys and girls, even though I showed you bolillo, because I really believe, and I think you should look this up. I think you should Google this. I think tortillas is probably eaten more than any other bread in the United States because of our population of people of Latin descent. What is interesting also about the tortilla, I remember a time that I would go to a restaurant and I would order a breakfast and it was never given to me with a tortilla. But many of the places that we are very familiar with will serve tortillas all the time, even McDonald's and Whataburger. So, tortilla, probably eaten more than any other bread in the United States. English muffin, and this story, and this bread, go all the way back to England. And so, many times when we are told stories, uh, people will read books to us, or we read them ourselves. We will start the story off saying, once upon a time. Well, once upon a time, in a land far, far away, called England, with its big castles. And in those castles lived the king and the queen and the prince, and the princess. But when we re read the stories, we very seldom hear about the people that cleaned up the castle, that also lived there. Oh, I know what you're talking about, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about Cinderella. Oh, yes, Cinderella lived in the castle cleaning up. But she was doing all the vacuuming and washing the clothes and everything else. But in castles, poor people did all of the work. And poor people lived in the basement of the castle. And whenever they finished doing all of the work of cleaning up that big castle, they would go downstairs in the basement and they would bake English muffins for their dinner. Well, something happened, boys and girls. The king and the queen and the prince and princess began to smell that sweet aroma as that aroma made its way up to the castle. And then they decided they wanted what those poor people were eating. And so the king and queen, prince and princess, they had to creep down to the basement to see what the poor people were eating. And that's how they learned about English muffins.
But guess what, boys and girls? English muffins is a bread that was first eaten by poor people, and now it is switched. People that's very poor will not buy English muffins. Could you tell me in which country did the croissant originate in? And if you say any other country other than Austria, I'm going to have to say wrong. The croissant was first baked in Vienna, Austria. And it was baked at a time that the people of Austria was at war with the Turks. And because the Turks were Muslims, the croissant was baked by a baker from Belgium. And the symbol of the croissant is the crescent moon. And so, this bread was made in this shape to symbolize a war between the Christians and the Muslims. But something happened, boys and girls. If you said France, I have to say to you, France made it popular, but the croissant did not originate in France. With all of the breads, you are probably wondering which bread Mrs. Cherry eat? Well, the cornbread. Mrs. Cherry eat cornbread all the time for breakfast, for dinner, for lunch. And so, this is a bread that I grew up with. Even when I was a very little girl, my mother would make cornbread. Boys and girls, can you tell me what is this? And if you said pretzels, you are absolutely correct. However, this is not a bread. This is a snack. But the origin of pretzels, this was a gift, this was a present that was made and given to little children that displayed good behavior or said their prayers. But it didn't look, it looked exactly like this in shape. But the pretzels were very big and they were eaten with cheese and marmalade in the morning for breakfast. So, I want you to just think about that. A bread that was made just for little children that showed good behavior and that saved their prayers. So, pretzels can be little as a snack, or they can be very huge as a breakfast food. Pretzels. Now, when I wanna make a sandwich. See, I, I don't make my sandwiches out of cornbread. I grew up making my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches out of a bread that like, looked just like this. And from some of you, you are very aware of this bread because many of us make our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches out of a bread that looks just like this. And it's just a plain white bread. So what I need for you to do for me, boys and girls, is one more time to repeat after me. Bread come in different colors, different sizes, different shapes, but it's all bread and it's all good. Boys and girls come in different colors, different sizes, different shapes, but we all belong to the same human family and we are all good and we are all beautiful. And that's the lesson that Mrs. Cherry wants you to really learn. Sometimes Mrs. Cherry become very sad. And sometimes 
I really feel like crying. And what makes me sad is that Mrs. Cherry have heard little children say things, repeat things that they heard big people say. And some of those things that they are repeating are things like, I don't like you and I can't play with you because of the color of your skin. I don't like you and I can't play with you because of the shape of your eyes. I don't like you and I can't play with you because your hair is too straight or too curly. I don't like you and I can't play with you because of your religion. And Mrs. Cherry understand that you're only repeating things that you heard big people say. But I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor, boys and girls. Whenever you hear anyone say things like that, I would really like for you to use your big voice and say that's not true because Miss Cherry said all children are beautiful and all children are good. That's the lesson I want you to learn that all boys and girls come in different colors, different sizes, different shapes, but we all belong to the same human family and we're all good. And if you would do that for me, boys and girls, Miss Cherry will continuously open bread baskets so no child would ever have to be hurt by hurtful words. Can you do that for me, boys and girls? I thank you. Bon appetit.